Hey, I'm Will, and this is Cardboard Minute. I'm going to be playing today Tale of Tuakan, City of Gods. This game has been designed by Daniel Ficini and with co-design by David Turksey. It is a medium of the heavy style Euro game where we will be building the central temple, building graves to honor our ancestors, and decorating the temple as well to the gods. Let's head down to the table. I will teach you how to play. I will also teach the solo game how that works. I'll play through an entire solo round, and then I'll give you my review afterwards. Now, be forewarned, I do have the Shadows of Zytel expansion, as well as the late pre-classic period expansion as well. And I will uh, try to differentiate what parts are from what during my instruction. So here I have the board set up for a two-player game, which is very similar to the solo setup, uh, with some slight differences being the AI starts off a little higher on some tracks, and I'll, I'll go over that more specifics. I've also opted for the printed-on boards, but you can choose to alternatively use any of the separate boards, in which case you would randomly shuffle them all and spread them out around the table. Uh, also, the expansion offers some slight variants on the standard boards, which really are just a slight redistribution of some of the powers and things. They work the same way. The only real uh, large difference for the expansion is the uh, orange temple track here in a new spot provided on the um, honoring the um, honoring the dead tracks where you can go and visit the Orange Temple. So that's the only real difference there. Also, the Shadow, Shadows of Exital will offer a number of different tech tiles and bonus tiles and, and things like that throughout the game. But uh, other than that, it doesn't really change the gameplay too much. I am going to be leaving out the events module from Shadows of Exital, which is not really, uh, actually from the late pre classic period, just because it's not particularly needed. And I've also opted to place my tiles in a bag, which just makes them easier to draw them in place. So on your turn, you will be using your die as workers to move around the board and taking the actions or claiming cocoa and then powering them, empowering them up. So how that works is first we need to get them out on the board. So when you start the game, you could use the recommended setup. Um, however, you may also choose to deal out four of the starting player tiles, in which case, uh, to each player, in which case the player will pick three of them and get everything that is shown on those tiles, as well as places their three die on uh, whatever selection of the numbers that are shown on the tile. And that is the starting position. So let's just say I'm, I'm here. Each of the different locations is a different spot. Uh, remember, there is a tile that is reserved for Ascension uh, that is set up the three here. So what happens is on your turn, you will advance one, two, three spaces. And then you will take the action there or you will claim Coco. Now, when you're moving the claim Coco or claiming actions, you're really looking at what different colors of dye are at the spot. So for example, if I was to move this die over here, there are already, before I moved, two different colors of the dice at that location. That means that if I want to take the action, it's gonna cost me two additional cocoa in order to perform the action. Or I could choose, instead of taking the action, I can choose a claim cocoa round or claim cocoa turn, in which case I will claim Coco equal to the number of colors of dice before I moved onto that spot plus one. So in this case, three. So it's a good way to gain Coco, especially when there are large groups of different colors and things on that board. And then you go and take whatever the action is, which is really not as difficult as it looks. There is a law on the board, but things are written out pretty clearly. So I'll go over what the actions are. But also, um, alternatively, instead of the Coco or the action, you can choose to worship at one of the temples. In which case, you would move, and instead of paying any Coco or claiming Coco, you would lock them into that key slot here. 
and do the, temp the prayer action. Now, you could either take one of the tiles of your choice, these are free to look through, or you can advance on the temple track, one step with the color that matches, or you can pay a cocoa to do both. Now watch out because some of these tiles do have additional costs on top of them. So in order to claim a tile, you would have to pay those additional costs. Now when you move up the temple tracks, you move up your little guys here. If you have the base game, they are just wooden discs, but with the expansion, it adds fun little beeples. Really, there's no uh, gameplay difference. Uh, when you move up a track, you will then claim whatever is on that spot. If you move on to a spot where there's a tile, you will claim it. Again, paying for any cost that is involved. And ideally, getting all the way up to the second last spot, which is the bonus tile track spot, or the top marker. In which case, then at the end of the game, these bonus tiles would count as scoring towards you. So that it is potentially quite powerful scoring here. Now, the only real caveat of going to pray is that your people are then stuck in that locked spot. Now, they can be removed in a, one of a few different ways. So either they could be bumped by another player going into to pray at that spot, in which case they would pay a Coco to go in and just kick you out and then you just move aside. And that is fine. Or you can choose to spend your entire turn, essentially wasting a turn, to unlock all of your locked die for free. That's not ideal. But you can also, instead uh, do, of, of doing that, you can spend free Coco to unlock all of your locked die and then proceed to take your turn as normal. So do be aware of that. There is different spots for praying to different temples around the board. Anytime you see one, one of these, oops, I guess you can't really see the camera here. But anytime you see something that shows all three, uh, like for example in here, then you can choose which temple track. If you're playing with the orange temple, you could also choose that one as well. I wonder if I, if I move this over, can I see it better? Maybe a little bit. Okay, so now let's cover the different actions. So first we have the technology board. Here you will be looking at the different powers of your die and how many die you have. In fact, many of the different locations of the game will change strength depending on the, the power or the number that the, the die you moved is at uh, onto that tile but also we'll look at how many of your own die are already on that spot on the board. All right, so this spot is the technology board. Here, there are different technologies. So you could either play with the ones that are written on the board, or you can randomly select six uh, technologies from your collection and then order them by a little number in a the corner. Then you, you can choose to purchase a technology. Now, each of the actions of the game will change in strength and uh, different, what things are available to you based on the number of the die that you moved in to take that action, but also based on how many die that you own are already on that tile. So for example, here, I can t buy any one of these tiles or in order, you know, place my technology marker to show that I have unlocked that technology by paying the gold cost and then with a plus one here, raise the pips number of my die by one. And then getting the god track movement that is associated. And if someone else already had the technology before you, they would gain three points. Alternatively, if I went to this location with a four or five, I could buy, or if I had two different die here, I could buy one of the lower technologies. So that holds true to most of the other spots in the game. For example, the wood action here has a little chart that shows how many die, what the number of die is, and also how many die you have. And you'll see the same will apply to both the stone and to the gold. These all work the same way. So if I went here with a die that had a five, 
I could first look at things in the far right column here, but I only have one die, so I would just get two stone. If I had an existing die here, I would now have a five and two die, so I would get two cocoa and three wood. And then I would raise the pip values on one of the die. So this is good to keep track of. Now, if your die ever reach a six, you will then ascend, in which case it will get sent back to a one, back to the starting temple, which is the number one location, and you will get to pick a bonus from this little selection here. One of the bonuses being two cocoa and an additional die. But be careful because during the clips, you will have to pay food for your workers. One cocoa for a one, two, or three die, and two cocoa for a four or five die. But there are other bonuses as well to watch out for. All right, so now we know how to get the three different resources found in the game. Now, what can you do with them? So first we're gonna go over here. This is where you can build grave sites to honor your ancestors. It'll cost you two wood. And then you'll take one of these white buildings and place it on one of the rows, depending on how many die you have at this location. You'll then claim the point value that you covered over. Now, when you do this, you also go up one on the honor of dead track. By the way, also when you ascend, you will also move up one whenever you ascend. So you will advance steadily up this track throughout the game. During the scoring phase, which happens during the clips, you, which I'll get to eclipses in a minute, you will score the number of steps up this track multiplied by the lowest revealed point value shown on this little track here. So that is one strategy is moving up this track. All right, next we're gonna look at building the main temple, which is the number eight location. You know, if you're playing with expansion, some of these will look a little bit differently, but they all work the same way. Here you'll have how many tiles you build is based on how many die you have at that location. So if you have three die, you can build all three tiles. The cost of the, of the tile is based on how high on the pyramid you are placing it. Okay, and there is also different point values given to you depending on how high you place it. You of course have to have a valid location to place it. So the Cavallo location could be you know, any empty spot on the ground floor, or you'd have to cover over uh, an inwards step up and upwards from existing places. You also cannot overhang a tile. So you know, I could place one here, or I could place one in the center or here, et cetera. <clears throat> you can also rotate tiles however you want. And then when you place it, you will get a point per icon that matches with the icons underneath. So if I place this one here, I would actually get four points. Plus, since it's on the second level, additional three points. If you cover, if you uh, had a colored icon and you correctly matched the spot below it, you would then move up on the corresponding colored god track. Now for each tile that you've built, you can advance on the building track, which at the end of the eclipse will score four points to the person who is furthest along the track. And then you will score points as shown here, multiplied by the number of movements along that track. So first round would be four and then three and then two. Lastly, we have the decorations. Decorations will cost three gold, but you'll get discounted based on how many of your own die are here. You can pick from the selection, you get three points. <clears throat> and then you'll place with the small arrow, see there's a little tiny arrow at the top of that tile, facing inwards on the bottom step around of any one of the spots around the board. So for example, I could place here for my first one and then on a later turn, I could move in and then place, place one higher up or along one of the other bottom steps. And of course, just like the other construction action, if you match a colored god symbol, you will advance on the corresponding track as well. And 
Then whenever you get back to your home base here or the number one tile, Sometimes there are technologies involved, but you may also choose to lock yourself in to one of the special actions here. There is another stack of tiles here that you can buy for one cocoa, uh, plus whatever the cost is for the tile, if there is one. And these actions are all based on the value of your die. And how that looks is that usually it'll be based on uh, you know, number maybe subtracted by one, and then that will give you a ratio of what you could do. So these are randomly selected at the start of the game. The Shadows of Excital brings in a few extra ones for some variety. And uh, for example, here, this is up to the max number of my die. So my die is five. I can spend up to five resources to get two cocoa per resource. Uh, this is a lock symbol though, so your die will be locked in here. Okay, yeah, let's jump back here. Now the orange track is available in the late pre-classic period expansion, and this adds a separate god track to move up on. Uh, like I said, before any time you get to choose which god track you move on, you could choose that one instead. Also, whenever you land on one of these little dot symbols, you can choose a technology from the, the corresponding dot locations. And there is a few different technologies to choose from. I'm not going to cover them in detail. You can look at the rule book for that. And after each player has taken a turn, the final player will move the sun marker up one space. Or if ever a player ascends a die, that will move the sun open another, uh, move upwards another slot. If the sun token ever gets down onto the black marker during a round, at the end of that round, a eclipse phase will take place where you'll pay your workers in cocoa. Also for each cocoa you cannot pay, you will lose three points and you will score things like the masks where you will have points based on how many different masks you have. Uh, and then after you've scored the God track, uh, the um, advancement on the, uh, the House of the Dead track, or the construction track, those will then get reset. And you will move the sun token back to zero and advance the black marker up by one. So each future round will be slightly shorter than the previous one. At the end of the third round, you will do all that again, but then you will also score any of the final upper bonus tiles that have been reached. And whoever has the highest score at the end of the game wins. Now, to cover the solo of the game, uh, as well as a little bit of the late pre-classic period additions. Uh, so firstly, late pre-classic period adds some different um, individual player powers, you could say. Some of them have both boons and uh, detriments to, to you. For example, the one that I've randomly selected here allows me to get a technology for only one gold. As uh, sorry, it's reduced by one gold, so some of them can be free but uh, also I may never choose to worship, and whenever I advance on these tracks, I may not claim a tile. So that can be kind of painful here, but also there are different unique AI kind of flavors that uh, will also be provided for during the Lake Pre-Classic period expansion. Uh, the one that I'm playing with today is uh, during Ascension, uh, Teotibot, which is the name of the AI, will advance one step on each temple instead of taking its normal five victory point reward. So I gotta watch out for it ascending. Now how the AI works is you, uh, first of all, you're gonna have to check the rule book for a specific setup of what the AI gets and where it starts. The, what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll the two extra die and then you're gonna add up that number and you're gonna look at this little pyramid of tiles. And how this works, they use the pyramids uh, upper levels are all assigned numbers. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You activate the tile associated with this. So this in case is 5, which would be this one. You activate that tile and then remove it and then bring everything upwards based on these position markers. So this one would move up and then the tile that was set aside would fill in the blank spot 
and the old one would move in. Now, I do recommend that you uh, look for a, a player guide uh, for this game on uh, the Board Game Geek forums because the AI does have a lot of little small rules and how it works the actions. But basically what it's going to do uh, for the most part is it's going to try to perform the action on the left. If it can't, it'll do the action on the right. So for example, uh, a six and then a two. And if it can't do either, it will just get five cocoa and advance its lowest powered die. And that's kind of the default fallback for whenever it fails to do something. But it's not always the fallback, which is slightly strange. So what different actions do is the six and the two, if it has two wood and it has a die on the six, it will attempt to build the House of the Dead. Uh, and where the level it builds on is based on the rounds, right? So um, round one, two, and three, or sorry, eclipse one, two, and three. Uh, and then it will advance its highest die and move forward, or sorry, its lowest die, and then move forward afterwards by one step. Or if it, this is uh, just before the third eclipse, it, the die will move forward two steps. And then we have the same thing for stone, right? Which is essentially, it will do the same uh, building idea. If it has two stone, it will attempt, and it has a die on the construction location, it will attempt to build. If not, it will look to see if it has a die on the number three stone collection. Uh, if it does, it will collect two stone. Uh, and if it can't do that, then it will fall back to the five cocoa and lower, uh, sorry, raise the lowest die by one. Uh, next, we have the gold location, where it's going to try to build decorations. Uh, and then it will, if it can't do that, it will look to see if it has any die on the four and then get some gold. And if it can't, it will do the fallback. Now, in terms of uh, placement and things for these, uh, if you will be placing the decoration uh, just on the upper tile and it will just straight up get five points and then move forward on whatever is the furthest ahead God track that it has. Uh, similar for, for construction, you it will try to build in the lowest level possible and will get points plus two equal to uh, whatever wherever it happens to build. Uh, in, in default, it will move in like a building like a, a clockwise fashion. And the last the technologies, which is the one spot here, it will advance twice when it builds uh, on this one. So it, it, it also always count as having two die. So it'll attempt to build here, uh, so build a technology, uh, starting with the lowest number and then moving progressively higher. Uh, it'll do the same claiming the God bonus if it can. And also whenever it has a God, uh, sorry, it has technology that you don't already and you claim that technology, the AI will get three points. Uh, and then we have the one, two, three, four, five, which just means it's going to look at starting with the highest value die on the board. It's going to look to see where those that die is and whether it can perform the action at the location. You know, essentially, it'll run through all of its available die to see if it can perform any of the actions. Uh, and then we have lastly, oh, sorry, not quite lastly, the locked location. In which case, it will just move the to the next locked location that is, uh, you know, clockwise around the board, and it will move up twice on the god track of its choice. And it, but if it lands into the three, it will move up. Uh, sorry, into the the triple. Choose your own god advancement. It will move up three times. And then we have the mask, where it's going to look clockwise for all the stacks and just take a mask that it does not already have. Which, frankly, is straight up cheating, but we'll let the eye get away with that. Okay, so I believe that is it for the soul mode instruction. Now it's time to play. And I'm going to have to choose my starting tiles. I always do like 
the, the bonuses that give me uh, more technology. I think it might, they might take, take that one to start. And maybe the, the gold, so I can kind of carry on with that. And, you know, maybe I'll take the, the cocoa as well. I feel like I'm gonna need some cocoa. So let's get rid of this. Let's claim, so this is, one is one of the ones from the Shadows of Exidal expansion. And it is take the most expensive, furthest to the right spot, gain the bonus, which is green. So I can move up here and get a cocoa. And then get a resource of my choice. And since I'm going for technologies early, maybe I should take a gold. Although I do have a discount already. So you know what, I'll, I'm gonna take gold for that one. Uh, so then I'm, I'll take three cocoa. It's always good to have lots of cocoa on hand. Two wood and three stone. This will come in handy for construction. Although construction is pretty clogged up right now. It's not gonna be easy. And then I will get a pip advancement on one of my die. So let's go for, anyway, I should take these back because I haven't actually placed them yet. Uh, okay, so I'll put one of them up to two. I'll take three wood and two more gold. So now I can place them in, let's see here, three, eight, seven twice if I want, and two and four. You know, I'm gonna place one at seven. Uh, I think I'll place one at three. And where's two and four? Four's over here, two. Yeah, I'll place one at, I'll place one at two as well. All right, so that is it for all of my placements. And let's see, so I can purchase technology for reduced cost of one gold, which is quite nice, minimum zero gold. So I can essentially get them for free. Uh, I can also research any technology available, even if I only have one worker and he's not a five. However, I may never worship. So let's start off with maybe getting some, some more technology. It's probably a good idea, especially the one that gives me points for researching. Let's do that. So let's let's advance this guy here. I'm gonna have to spend a cocoa because there's already one other color there. And I'm going to buy this one here, which is gonna be reduced to a cost of zero for me. So nice. Uh, these don't activate until the end of the round. So I don't actually get points for itself, uh, but I get advancement on the red track, which does give me points. So that's pretty nice. And then I advance my dive to a two. All right, let's see what the AI is gonna do. It's a little hard to see these. All right, so we have six, two, three, four, five, six. So he's gonna look to see if he has any die on the number six track, which he does. And he has two wood. So he's gonna spin that wood. He's going to build a house on the three. Then he's going to advance his die to a three, uh, to three and then move one space. All right. Pick up on the track here. Okay, I need to do some things. I wanna, I kinda wanna build, but there's so many die here right now. It's ex too expensive. I could go up on, oh yeah, yeah, it goes up here. I could go up in that track too, which could help a lot, quite a bit. Because there's a fair amount of points early on. I do have plenty of gold. I could build a decoration. I don't think there are any really obvious decoration placements right now.
So if I went in here, I'd have to spend two cocoa, but I have two dye, so I get two wood. And I already have lots of wood, so I think I'm just gonna move, uh, let's see, one, two here. And since there are, uh, there are already three colors, that will give me four cocoa. Okay, the AI is gonna go. It's a three, so they're gonna look, oh, you want, I never replaced this, so that moves up and then up, and then this one's gonna flip and go beneath here, and the new one slides in. Okay, so, so now this one's gonna trigger. It's number five. The AI does not have a die on number five. So instead, it will take five cocoa and advance its lowest value twice. All right, so there's a one here. And then we need to remove this one. And the new one is just gonna bump in, but we always flip the top one down. And advance. Okay, so I think I'm gonna stick to my original plan here. And move around there. Spend the two wood. Take the two point slot here and move up on this track. All right, the AI is gonna go. Wait, do I get bonuses for that? Oh, I do, I get three points because of my bonus. So that's actually, that's actually working out pretty good for me. All right, the AI rolled a nine, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They do have a die on the eight, and they have two stone, so they're gonna spend that stone. They are always gonna place it on the left and place it on the lowest slot, kind of working clockwise here. And then they will claim, let's see, level plus two, so three points, two, three, move up on this construction track here. And then these will come down. Oh yeah, and they will advance one pip and then move. Let's draw a new tile. Ugh, that one's kind of plain. I don't think I want to spend that much, although it would be four points for me. So, well, that's something. Uh, all right, so the AI is also going to reset, move up, resets, and bump and advance. All right, where was I? Yeah, I think I'm gonna move up on the god track here. So let's clear the construction area of colors before I move in here again, because right now it's pretty pretty full. So I'm gonna go one, two. Oh, you know, I never advanced that die. So I'm gonna move, move two here, spin a cocoa, because I have my own color there. Uh, now I have two die here, so I can spend two wood and build on the low, the second rung here, which is five plus three, because my technology, so eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And move up on this track. And then advance one of my die. Okay. AI is roll nine again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's highest value die, which I believe is going clockwise, is here. Can they build decoration? They can build decoration for two gold. They place one right here at the top. Uh, they are going to gain five points. One, two, three, four, five. Move up here again. And then they're going to advance one and move. Okay. Oh, and move here. Uh, and of course that bumps up here, comes in and flip. All right, now it's back to my turn. So I'm gonna have to pay 
cocoa before long in order to get a little further. So um, I think I'm going to I'm going to go snag another technology. I think if I can, because I would love to have the tech that gives me three points for construction uh, before I get the construction. So I could go I could go for gold here, and I need to do tech later. That might be my best bet. So I'm going to move one here, spend one cocoa, because there is only one other color there, even though there's two dye, it's only one color. And I'm going to get one gold. Okay. Seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, there. Oh, did I forget to lock one of their die? I did forget to lock one of their die. They should have, the AI should have had one die. Locked somewhere. He went locked into the seven. There's this guy. Okay, so they're going to just move. Bump. So the actually no, you want know, I think they skipped the orange. You start the blue. All right, so the tail to bot is going to move up here. Is going to take resources. It has the least of starting with gold and then stone, uh, and then wood if it had any wood. Uh, next, it is going to move that, slide it up, slide up, insert new one, and flip, and advance. Okay, I still got lots of cocoa. Might be time to go get that tech that I wanted. So one, two, three. And this, oh, I gotta pay one cocoa because there's a uh, blue die there. I can do any level because of my special ability and at a reduced cost. So for one gold, I'm gonna take this location. Now I'll, I'm gonna get three points right away because I researched based on my tech and I get one advancement on the red track, which is gonna give me another point. And then I get to advance this to a four. Okay. Thoughts? Where are you going? A three. Okay, it's looking for its highest value again. So it's going to go here. It does not have the stone. So uh, actually, in this case, they're going to look down the next highest. So the three. Uh, yes, it can do this action. So it's going to take two gold. And then it's going to advance and move, and they always skip the center uh, palace tile. Uh, all right, so that's just going to reverse and advance. I'm going to have to save some cocoa here soon in order to in order to uh, complete, uh, you know, my my payment. So maybe I will go ahead and build. It cost me a couple. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go one, two. It's going to cost me two cocoa. So I'll take uh, three back. And let's spend, okay, a discount of one. So I'm only going to have to spend one stone. Unless there's a higher location, that'd be better. You know what? Yeah, let's uh, let's build on the second level. So I'll spend two stone and take the discount on wood to build on the second level. And I'm going to take this tile and I'm going to match with four different slots. So that's going to be four points plus three, is seven plus three is ten. So eighteen twenty-eight. Move up here. And then advance to so five. Okay. The AI is going to go. It's going to go eight. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's going to look for a mask. And, and there's one mask here. And they just take it like a big cheater <laughs> without having to pay anything for it. Uh, all right. That goes down and move up, move up. Insert and flip and timer. So we are steadily progressing along here. I feel like one of us is going to 
the sand soon, which is going to speed things up a little bit. So let's, do I want to accelerate this? Let's see, is there a good step tile I can get? Maybe that will encourage me. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's, do I have the upgrade for seven, for tile seven? I don't, there's no upgrade for tile seven. All right, I'm going to move forward one here. Uh, pay a cocoa, because of the blue. Spend three gold, because I currently don't have any kind of gold discount for number seven tiles. And I'm gonna buy this one I just came out, that came out. And it's gonna get me one of each of these. So that is, let's see three points, one, two, three, uh, plus an advancement here, and then a blue and a red, so blue and a red, so two more points there, and for blue, I think I'll take a gold, thank you very much, and then advance, so it's going up to a six, so I'm going to ascend now, which means that this is going to further this. And I'm going to bump up here. And uh, let's pick a bonus. I can take, oh, the cocoa. I think I might take the cocoa. So this is ignore payment of cocoa for one action. Uh, so it could be for feeding or it could be for a different action. I, I get to pick a bonus. So I could move on two different tracks or two tracks I could get my other worker but then I just have to feed them I could take five cocoa that is a possibility or I could just take five points you know I think I'm going to take hmm do I want to spend this now to avoid three cocoa Let's bonus here, one Coco. So I only have two right now. Yeah, and is he gonna ascend? He's not going to ascend this turn. So I'm gonna have at least another turn to get Coco, which is key. Okay, so I am going to use my no Coco tile to take the two different god tracks. I'm gonna move up here, one and two. But since I can't claim any, I'm gonna take the, the lower underneath the step, which is just a cocoa. So this is two cocoa for me. Because I'm seeing there is a five points per technology here. And I've already got kind of an in on some cheap technologies, some sweet cheap technologies. So I'll he keep heading towards that. Uh, flip back to a one and go to the start. And come on, AI, 11. Okay, they really like this action. Uh, okay, their highest value. Uh, when there's a tie, rotate from here. So this is going to get them two stone. And then advance to a five and move. Uh, and this is going to get replaced and flip, oops, not that one, this one. Uh, all right, and then move here. So I still, I got one more turn, the end of Coco. I'm gonna have to feed one, two, three workers, three Coco, you know, that's, that's manageable. That's totally manageable. Uh, let's see if I have one here for one, no, that's only one wood, it's not very good. One wood is no good. I could go here and do one of these. I could do a construction action. No, I don't have the cocoa. Unless I can build. So we're gonna slide these down. A red tile. Hmm. Yeah, I don't wanna get, short on cocoa. 
That would not be good at all. Here, let's gather these up here. Um, I really want to build, and I, and I have the resources to build in the second level, but I'd be spending two cocoa, which would not leave me enough. Well, I already used my, t I already used my tile. No, I have no, I have no cocoa bonuses. So I think instead, let's just, let's just go get some cocoa. That's probably our best bet. Yeah, let's just go down here and claim two plus one, so three cocoa. I, I gotta be ready for, uh, for payment. Okay, AI, tilt the bot, where are you going? Six, two, three, four, five, six. Do they have a die on the seven? They don't. Do they have a die on the four? They do. So two gold, advance and move. And then this is going to flip, bump, pretty bump, 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 pretty bump. And we are in business. And that is it. That is the first eclipse. All right, so first we got to feed workers. I am feeding three cocoa worth. Then we're going to look at the god track here. So four points times three, so that's 12 for me. Five and eight for yellow. Uh, next, we are going to look at the construction track. So we are actually tied right now. So oh, what happens in a tie? We both get the bonus. Oh, the player or players. Okay, so we each get four points. And then we get uh, points multiplied by that number. So that's another eight points. Not bad. And then that resets. And then we get mask points, which I have none. The AI has one. So that's just one point. And that is it. So uh, because we're playing with the orange track, they're going to get a bonus at the end of the first eclipse. So next round, they're going to have uh, plus two for here when they are counting the eclipse bonuses. Let's put it over inside. Uh, OK, this resets. That moves up. And it's back to my turn. OK, I'm flush with Coco again. Do I want to go construct? Let's go construct. So let's go spend two cocoa. And oh, this is a pretty one. Do I have location for it? Hmm. Well, we got one maybe here. That would be worth. Just an additional two points. Huh. I'd love to get that advancement on the track, but eh, it's not working so well for me here. Hmm, that was a shame. Uh, all right, so I'm going to Yeah, you know what? I'm going to have to do it. Okay, so since I get a discount, I can spend a stone and a wood. And I'm going to build this fancy one on the second level. And it is just going to get me... Wait, where was it? Yeah, it's just going to give me one here. So it's going to give me three points, four... Five, six, seven points. Five, six, seven. And I get advancement on the red track, which is another two points. And I get a bump here. 
And then we need to redraw. And this moves up to a three. Okay. Kill the bots. Seven. All right. Do they have a die on the six? They do. Do they have wood? They don't. Do they have a die on the two? They don't. So when that happens, they're going to take their bonus five cocoa. And now that they have 10 cocoa, they're going to burn it right away for, where was it? They get something when they get 10. I know that much. Up, get our notes, get more cocoa, three points. Okay. So they're gonna spend their 10 in cocoa and get three points. And then they're gonna advance their lowest valued worker. So this is a four. That is gonna go up one and then it's gonna move one. Okay. So that one failed, and we're gonna have refill, refill, new one, oh wait, new one, and then flip, and advance. Okay, I'm pretty low on cocoa again. I, I would love to get here for some, oh, I forgot to move, I forgot to move the, the die after Eclipse. Uh, I'm sorry, after Eclipse. Supposed to move these dice, so let's move uh, blue. Is going to four, three, and six. Four and three. Yeah, uh, you're just picking the first three numbers, and then black is going to one, two, and six. Uh, two, one, and six. So actually, I wouldn't have to pay the two cocoa for that location. Oops. Okay, all right. Well, I'm sorry, that changes a couple things. Uh, like, you know what, I think we're going to go get some cocoa now. So one, two, and take four, plus one is five cocoa. And then the bot is going to move to a six, two, three, four, five, six. They're gonna bump their lock over to here and go up twice in the green track. One, two. Uh, and then that will give them two cocoa. And do they advance that one? Yeah, they do. So that is a four. Come on, where's a four? Uh, actually, I think they do take that one and they draw a random one. Okay, then we are going to switch this one out. Bump up, bump up. Add that one in and flip. We still see resources. Yes. Okay. And then they're going to we're going to advance here. All right. So I've kind of lost track of what I'm going to do. Uh, I should really go get some more wood. Stone. Yeah, stone for building. If I go in there for three, I'll, I'll get one stone. If I go in for here for three, I'll get one gold. Uh, okay, let's. Doesn't really matter which one. So let's go one, two, three. Spend a cocoa and get a stone. Stone, which is 
not a very strong action. And then move this up to a three. Okay, and then they are going five, two, three, four, five. So eight. They have no die on the eight. They have a die on the three. They don't. So they're going to take five cocoa and advance their lowest. Um, is their lowest? Yeah, their lowest. They're about to ascend pretty soon. Okay, that moves. And we have, let's see, a new one coming in. Advance, okay. I'm gonna be kind of lucky with the dice placement for them right now. Uh, I guess they're not building anything as they should be. I, however, can go build. I also want more tech, which might come first. So yeah, let's go over here. I'll raise that to a four. Spend two cocoa. And I get a discount of a gold. So I can actually place this one for free. And Zalan is one of the new expansion ones, I believe. I'm not quite sure what it does. So says during Eclipse scoring, after paying salary of your workers as normal, you may pay one additional cocoa for each worker you have. If you do, immediately gain two victory points for each worker. Oh, okay. Uh, interesting. So he's gonna move up. Oh wait, did I move him up already? No, I didn't. He's gonna go up to a five. Maybe I did advance him already. I don't know, I, if, I, if, I, if I did already, uh, or if I didn't, I'm sorry. Uh, and I get three points for getting a technology. Okay, AI, six, two, three, four, five, six. All right, do they have a die on the five? They do. Okay, they're gonna get the lowest technology that nobody has. Oh yeah, and I forgot to move up the track for blue. And I'll take a stone for that. Okay, they're gonna move up uh, also on blue and they'll take the mask. And AI always redraws new tiles when they go. Okay, uh, and then they're going to oh, advance pips twice. Oh no, just once, because it was successful. Uh, they're gonna advance this one to a six, so they, they get to ascend. And they always take the bonus five points. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, all right. And then this goes down. Move up, move up. Inserts. Flip. And go ahead twice. Once for the, the ascension. And once for, oh yeah, and then I will take this one too. So they'll take, actually, yeah, I think they take the top one. Uh, and they don't, they don't claim anything for those. Uh, all right, sorry, now it's my turn. I could go back and build again. Really, it'd be nice if I saved up resources and build a lot at once. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get very much if I do that. Eh, forget. Um, uh, you know what? Hmm, this one's pretty nice. Blue. I'd love to get more green. Uh, and I've never refilled this. 
Is there a decoration I could easily build? Don't have the gold for it. I could get gold over there. Uh, it would give me one gold, which is not ideal. I need a higher pip value to do that. So the big question is, what do I do? Do I go get more wood? That's expensive, but I'd be getting two wood. But this action is super expensive. Okay, I'm not doing that. All right, well, let's just go build. Uh, one, two, and it's going to cost me, let's see, two stone, and I get a discount of one. So I can build on the upper level if I want to. And what am I going to build? I love to get this blue track movement just for the resource. But I feel like that's not something that's going to give me one resource. I mean, that might be all I really need right now. It's just one resource. Um, mm hmm. Or I can just go for points. You know what, I'm just gonna go for points. So I'm gonna spend only one stone. Uh, this is gonna be one point, two, three, four, five. And then with my tech, six, seven, eight points. 69 to 77. And he's going up to a five. And I move up here as well. Okay. Oops. Ooh, it's like caught by my microphone cable. All right. Nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're looking at masks starting from here, looking for a unique mask. I don't think they have this one yet. So they're just straight up getting the mask uh, and then replacing it with a different tile. And that's it. All right, goners, and move up, fill that in, flip, and advance. All right, so I did not plan out the gold for this one. I could move around and I could build again. You know, that might not be a bad idea. Let's go. One, two, that's a waste of a double build though, because I only have enough for one build action. Well, you know what, that's fine. Uh, let's go here, so one, two. I'm just gonna spend a single stone because I have my discount. And I am going to build, maybe I will build that lower level one now. So this is gonna get me two points, two, three, four, five, six points. One, two, three, four, five, six, and an advancement on the blue track. So I'm gonna take a gold for that. Uh, and then I'm gonna move, here, let's refill. Oh yeah, move up here. And I'm gonna ascend keep the cost in this guy low uh, and he is going to this going to move me up here send to a one and I'll take hmm, I'm gonna spend the three cocoa to move up twice on this track to get four cocoa I think that worked out Okay, oh, yeah. and that advances because I ascended. Nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do they have a thing on the six? They do. Do they have the wood? They don't. Do they have a die on the two? They do have die on the two, so they'll take two wood. And then they're gonna ascend. 
you get five points. This is going to go down, move up, fill in, flip. And this is actually going to go twice now because they ascended and they had the turn. So that triggers the end of another eclipse. So now it's time to feed. So now if I feed double, I can get two points per worker. I might do that. So it's going to cost me six food in total. But then I'll get six points. Thanks to my technology tile here. Uh, okay, then we are going to look at the track. Oh yeah, uh, they, they go up here because they ascended. They're going to look at the track here. So four, one, two, three, four times four is 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, 51, 61. Five, six, five, 105. I'm going to put this little tracker here just to show I'm at 100. Uh, next, we're going to look at the construction. So I'm at the highest right now, so that's four points. And then I'm going to get three times three. So that's nine, another nine points. It's going to reset. And then we have masks. So they have, oh, sorry, they count as additional two for the sake of Eclipse. So they're going to get an additional eight points. Uh, okay, so mask, they have three masks, which is six points. And then the AI is going to get this bonus, so they're going to count as having an additional mask next round. Uh, okay, so we've reset this. This is going to go back. This is going to move up one. This is going to be our last round. And before I forget, let's assign blue is going to move to four, five, one. So four, uh, there's one and five. And then black is going to move to two, seven, four. Uh, two, sorry, on two and seven. Okay, and I am first. Now what am I going to do? Do I want to build another tech? I think I do want to build another tech. It will be giving points to the AI, but you know, I'm going to do that anyways. So let's go here, pay one Coco. So I am super poor in Coco right now. And I'm going to buy so two points per mask. Yeah, I'm going to buy this tech. That lets me switch up to four goods for four different goods whenever I cross go or whenever I pass go. Uh, that's going to give uh, me three points because I'm upgrading. And the AI three points. And advanced to two. And that is my turn. Okay, ten. They are going to look at tile number five, which they do not have anything on. So they're going to gain five cocoa. They have 10 now, so they'll spend that three points. And then they're going to advance their lowest die by one. Okay. Oh, actually, that one is, uh, that one defaults to two. That was a little weird. Okay, now we need to switch this one. And flip. And advance. Okay, I really need some cocoa right now. I am flush out of cocoa. So let's go. Let's just go move in here and take three cocoa. Okay. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Their highest value, again, these are all not locked, uh, is here. Do they have two wood? They do have two wood. 
Oh yeah, in the third round, I forgot, they, they move an additional time. So their highest, uh, sorry, two woods, then they're gonna build on the lowest track for a seven, move up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh oh, catching up. Uh, and then, let's see, which was that? Oh, yeah, that's this one. Okay. And then we gotta move up, move up. New one, flip, advance. Uh, oh, yeah, and this one rolls up to five and moves two spaces. We're skipping the home, uh, unless they ascend. Uh, all right, I need, oh, I still need Coco. Maybe I should get the last tech, just for the, the bonus. I really, oh, you know what? I didn't get the blue here when I got that tech. So I'm gonna move up and take a resource of my choice. It's gonna be a gold. Uh, okay, yeah, so I'm gonna go I really want to get that last tech though. I think I might just have to two, three, and get four cocoa. One, two, three, and get four cocoa. Ah, cocoa is kind of a pain to come by sometimes. All right. Yeah, hey, hey, where are you going? Six, two, three, four, five, six. Locking is going to move from here, down to here, advance to five. And they're moving up on the red track. Ooh, they're gonna take a mask. That's not good for me. And, oh yeah, they're going to twice here. So they're also gonna take two resources, which they don't have the least of, which is two wood. Uh, move here, move that one is gonna go up and over and then fill and flip. Uh, and I already advanced, okay. Yeah, let's uh, let's go in here. Uh, one, two, three. Spend the three cocoa. This is kind of painful. So much cocoa. Uh, okay, this is going to advance to a two. I'm going to spend no gold because of my discount. I'm going to take this spot, give the AI a three. But I get free because I have the upgrade, and then I get an advancement on green. Um, which I can't afford. You know, I'm gonna spend a cocoa to take this tile. Oh, no, I can't, I can't take any tile. Because my, my ability does let me. So I, I do get two cocoa though, for going up. All right, Let's turn. Three, four, five, two, three, four, five. Uh, they have nothing on six. They have nothing on two. So they're gonna take five cocoa and move up their last die by one and move one, two spaces. Uh, then that goes up, that switches, it goes up here and here and flip. Okay, I'm getting pretty desperate here. I really need to go up on some tracks. It's unfortunate that I may never choose to worship. Hmm. Okay, let's go one, two, three. Spend a cocoa, so this goes up to three. Spend three gold and take this one here and let's place it 
there for uh, let's see, three points. Advance up here. And uh, let's see, did I roll that up already? I think I did. Uh, so there's three points, and I get an advance bonus. Go up in green, three more cocoa. Hmm, what will I get to the top is a tricky question. Not being able to pray is a bit of a detriment for sure. Okay, let's fill in the next one. Ooh. Okay, all right, AI, where are you going? Three, four, five, two, three, four, five. Okay, the highest number, O, is five. So here they are going to get two stone. And then they're ascending for five points. And two ticks here. Oh, no, we're getting close to the end. Hmm. So I got a choice. Do I? Oh, you know what? Maybe I can lock it in. I am these useful. Red, two resources. Move two. What I really need is to get my die up. If I had wood, I could totally get wood here, but I don't. And I can only get one wood if I went here. which is not enough. I need at least two wood in order to build again. Well, I, really, I would really love to ascend if possible to get that double movement, because I would love to get this top of the track and take advantage of that. But I can't, I can't pray. I can still go to the palace, but I can't take pray or worship actions. So I, I could go here and spend a cocoa. Uh, I don't think the AI is going to advance anytime soon. No, it's not possible. So at least I have a couple turns to do it. Uh, but how? Don't have the gold for this. If I move the three there. I'll be getting uh, two gold, which is not enough to build on. So what am I gonna do? Construction has no green. I may just have to get gold and then go in and just straight up pay Coco to advance. But I, I may have to do that. Okay, so let's go over here. So it's a three, I gotta pay three Coco. Uh, I'm gonna get one gold. Oh no, sorry, uh, two gold, because I have two value there. And advance one of them. No idea, okay, all right, come on AI. What you gonna do? Six, two, three, four, five, six. Do they have anything on the eight? They don't. Do they have anything on the three? They don't. Take five cocoa, which means that they'll just spend 10 and get three points and advance their lowest die by one. So that works out well for me, actually. Uh, one, two, and then advance one. So I got one more turn to make a go at this. So I'm coming here, I'm, and I'm going to go there. Uh, first of all, I might spend the gold, so the cocoa first, and then the gold, take this for cocoa, and I'm going to use that right away. 
two, three, four. And then this location, I can spend uh, up to max of three. So I can fill three times, so I can spend three cocoa to go up on three tracks. So I can go three cocoa, seven cocoa. And then I get to the top bonus, which is what I wanted. All right, let's finish this. Two. All right, do they have a die on the five? They do have a die on the five. They have a gold, they have a gold. They're gonna buy the technology. And that is gonna give me three points. And they get to move up on the red track, which is a point. Okay, they are at 100 now. And that is it, because that's gonna advance. So we got one last, one last uh, eclipse here. So first I get a feed. So I'm spending two, three, four. I can just do the extra four, five, six, seven. To feed them and get six points. And now we're gonna look at the steps of the gods track here. So let's see, we are at three uh, and four. So that is 12 points for me. Was that three, six, eight? Now, however, they count as two steps higher. So four, five, six, seven times three is 21. Ooh, ouch. Okay, let's see if I can stay ahead here. Uh, next construction, uh, I am furthest ahead, so four points. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then two points per step, so that's two. Not much. And then masks, they count as having one additional mask. So one, two, three, four, five. Fifteen points, ouch. Two, three, four, five, so 26. 36. Okay, and uh, now we come down to the end game scoring things. They count as having, being at the top of that scoring thing and they always get 15 points regardless whenever they hit the top of a track. So 36, 46, 51, oh, it's close. But thankfully I got to the top of mine as well. So five points per technology I got six technologies, and that is 30 points. Whew, 84. Okay, and I believe that is it for the AI scoring. I think they only get the, the one track automatically, and they have to actually work for the other ones. So the clips. Yep, yeah, 15 points for each bonus tile. And that is, oh, uh, plus they get, oh no, they're gonna clips. They get an additional point for each leftover resource in Coco. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Three, 54, 64. Uh, two victory points for each technology tile. So an extra six, 70, okay. Oh, and that's it, okay. All right, so that was actually closer than I thought it would be. The AI really jumped ahead in the end there. The final score is 70, sorry, 170 to 184. Okay, so that is my sole playthrough of Tale of Wakan. Let's head back up and I will give my review. All right, so that was Tale of Wakan, City of Gods. As you can see, there is quite a lot going on in this game, quite a lot of little things to remember, especially with technologies and your scoring bonus points. Uh, but that also leads to, you know, bigger and more interesting turns as you go by. The, the temple is getting, uh, getting bigger and costing more, but you're also placing things higher, getting more points. Uh, you're getting further and further up tracks and, uh, and you're also, uh, raising and then ascending your workers. And uh, and that is a, a pr pretty fulfilling feeling when you're able to, you know, get to the end of that track for the bonus 
points and you've like got your worker, you know, flipped around from a, from a five, six, and then back to a one, just in time to not have to pay the extra cocoa for the eclipse. Uh, feeding your workers is always punishing. And I find a lot of, um, a lot of Euro style games, but, but here it's really not so bad. Uh, you know, it's not too difficult to just move ahead a little bit and grab some cocoa. It does feel like a little bit of a waste of a turn, but you know, it needs to be done so you can keep paying for actions as well. So it's just, it's just part of the game. Uh, you know, I love how there's so much different things you can do in this game. You know, like you could push up the, uh, the ancients or the, the uh, honoring the gods, building a little cemeteries track uh, and ascension to get higher and higher multipliers. But the more you do that, the lower the value of those multipliers become. Uh, you know, you can build this, you know, beautiful looking temple at the center here to get more bonus points. The higher you go, the, the, the more points it's worth especially with some technologies. You know, I had one that gave me a discount of a resource uh, one time when I take the number eight action, but also three points when I take it too. So that really cobbled together well for some points for me. Uh, and the, I should mention the game can also uh, end. Also, uh, it, it will trigger the final eclipse as soon as the last temple to uh, spot is built as well. <clears throat> so you could end slightly earlier, but I've only ever seen that once in, in all my plays of the game um, and not in solo either. It was, it was a four player game where everyone was, was building. So, uh, you know, I think the variability with the uh, different scoring markers uh, for the, those end game bonuses uh, being in different places does make the strategy just a little bit different each time. Uh, being able to change out the um, the palace locations uh, does change play a lot, the technologies, uh, and even the using the random locations, being able to shuffle up and switch the order of the locations around, uh, you know, really does change the, you know, the, the variability of the game. You're still doing more or less the same things, but in different ways, in different places, with different pacing, and that does still make the game feel different. Uh, so as, as far as the, the base game goes, uh, you know, this does, is a more complex Euro style game. Uh, it's definitely not for the fan of heart or, or people who are uh, not comfortable with heavy rules overhead. Uh, and you almost need to have someone who, uh, who is near like playing the game who has played it multiple times before to really remember all those little bits and, be, bits and pieces. Uh, and unfortunately there's no player aid in, that came with the game. Even the, I mean, the rule books are great and they have a breakdown on each of the different tiles available in the whole game, but there's no just easy player aid. So I do recommend looking online for something to print off maybe, uh, that, might, that might help. But once you start taking actions, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory and things are written on the board pretty clearly too, so it's not too bad. It's just some of the other weird symbols, uh, you know, are, are a little bit different. Uh, as far as the AI goes, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to manage. Uh, there, there is, however, lots of weird little cases and things where you're like checking this area and then check that area. And if it can't, you do this and do that. Uh, you know, so I do recommend printing off some sort of a cheat sheet to summarize that because having to dig through and flip through multiple pages in a rule book where there's just paragraphs of text explaining how the AI works is just a slog and a pain. And while I think the AI does a good job at mimicking how a player would, would probably play, uh, I, I also feel that it is clunky to manage uh, in terms of the actions. So the selection and the pyramid and, and the, the way that action selection is done is quite brilliant and, and maybe even fairly thematic. Or at least it feels it looks it looks fun because you're building a temple really, uh, but it's what each individual actions do. Really could have had uh, you know more symbology on the tiles themselves to make it a little bit more clear for how the action worked. I think that would have gone a long way to making the barrier to entry for solo playing to be uh, to make it much much easier to pass. Uh, now, as far as expansions go, uh, I only have the first two expansions. Uh, Shadow of, of uh, Exital just adds more stuff, more, more tiles, more technologies, uh, just more of everything. Uh, so, you know, more of everything is always, is always a good thing. There's just a little bit more variety. 
Uh, so I, that's, that's an easy one too. It's a fairly affordable expansion, so I do recommend that. Uh, the second expansion, the late pre-classic period, uh, I don't think is necessary for if you are primarily a multiplayer gamer, uh, although it is nice because you do have you know, those unique player powers where everybody is a little bit different. Uh, and I also really love how uh, you, you may have some awesome overpowered bonus, but guess what? You also have, you're also saddled with some detriment as well. Like I could never pray and I don't get bonus tiles on the God tracks, things like that. So uh, you're, you're both missing out, but also gaining at the same time. That is a really neat concept. Uh, and it also may help inform you of your strategy, or what you may want to do based on what, you, what player thing you got. Uh, but the, the biggest draw, I think, is uh, for the late pre-classic period is if you're a solo player, getting these AI flavors, these AI boards, uh, and there's several of them too, that change tail to bot. Uh, you know what? And I completely forgot to do it too. Uh, they should have this. Yeah, instead of taking the five victory points, they should have gone up once on each. I, uh, you know, I don't think that would have helped them that much. I don't think they would have gone far enough to really make a difference. But uh, anyways, <laughs> see, see, there's a lot of things to remember in this game. I totally forgot to apply the player power for each of the AI's ascension. Uh, but again, I, I don't think the, the point difference would have been that different. So anyways, the fact that there there is these that had additional um, kind of flavors to how the AI performs is quite nice too, even if you do forget it for the entire game and record an entire video with it, you know, be played kind of wrong, but you know, that is fine. Uh, component wise, the, uh, you know, the tiles are nice quality, you know, the dice are generic, but nice. Uh, you know, the little meeples only come in the expansion, uh, you know, which is too bad, but it's, it's functional. The resources are, you know, your typical wooden, simple shape resources, uh, you know, but it's, it's better than cubes. Uh, and then, of course, the real draw is, you know, these beautiful temple tiles are, a, are wood and they're, I guess they're uh, screen printed on top of the wood uh, and they just look fantastic. Um, they feel fantastic and they, they play well on the table. Uh, I do recommend I mean, any, any kind of game like this where you're drawing random tiles, throw them in the bag, uh, you know, but you can buy bags in bulk like that. It just makes it easier so you're not trying to stack them and shuffle them and organize them in between games. This makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to get to the table. Anything that's a little bit faster, containers is always recommended. So uh, I do recommend uh, these expansions. There is a third expansion that adds a little sideboard with some area control. Uh, I'm not convinced that is necessary. I feel like it's, I mean, I have not played it yet. So I, I'm just guessing based on what I've seen uh, and, and a little bit of the rule book that I've looked through. But I feel like throwing it in a separate area control board it's just too much extra. It's just not needed. You right? The game's already at a very good place with plenty of longevity already as is. And I think even at a decent price point, whether you get any expansions or not, by the way, none of them are necessary. Uh, you know, they, they're all, the base game is quite excellent just as is. So this is going to get a, a pretty high recommend from me. Uh, while it is not, you know, the most the mag game, like the the workers ascending, is all is all pretty pretty loose. Uh, but the the mechanisms of moving around the board uh, and and uh, evolving your guys and getting better actions, uh, you know, but having to pay them more for that and uh, blocking each other a little bit really makes for a really interesting Euro style puzzle type game that I have not seen many games do quite like this where there's this nice big you know rundell and then a rundell is always fun where the actions are going around because now you're you may have gone past the action you want and there's several times where i've gone you know too i'm too far away from the action i want to do and i didn't leave a die nearby so i could go take that action or you're waiting for people to you know especially in multiplayer you're waiting for people to clear off of an area and move their die so you can get in there and take it for less cocoa uh, or maybe you want people to pile up so you can just walk in there and claim a whole bunch of cocoa at once 
for a, a very efficient cocoa taking action. So again, uh, highly recommend to me, uh, for me, if you're looking for that crunchier meteor euro, uh, in my opinion, this is probably the best in the T line of games by Daniel Dezini. Uh I mean, I, I've played everything except for the new Tabnusi. Uh, I'm, I'll probably do a review later of Tekenyu, and uh, I played um, Zulkin uh, quite a bit as well. So, but I think this one is so far is my favorite from the group. Uh, if you're looking for one of his games, uh, maybe I'll rank them in a later video. We'll see. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more heavy games like this, yeah, uh, you know, please let me know. Uh, I've, you know, mostly because of camera setup and stuff. I haven't really done a lot of more complex games, but I've definitely got a, a pl plenty of them on my shelf that I am willing to, to teach and play. Uh, so let me know if you want to see more of those. And uh, that is it from me. Thanks for watching.